my grandmother took a secret to her grave and we just found out what it was. She passed back in 2002 and uh, at the time we thought she was born in 1933. We knew her name, we knew that she was an orphan and she was an only child, that we had no other family connections to her whatsoever and that um, her family line lived and died with her. So find me confused when our family gets results back from a 23andMe test telling us that we are African American when my grandmother said that we were English. And I know looking at me you're going to be very confused because I am too. And currently my family is still figuring out all the details so I don't have all the information. 23andMe matched my family up with a family in Virginia, which isn't too strange because my grandmother and my grandfather both met in Maryland and got married and ended up moving across the country. So when this family starts pulling out pictures of my grandmother and her 15 siblings, safe to say we were a little shocked. It turns out that Millicent Vaughn was born Mammy Vaughn back in 1927, not 33. She was born to a family of 15 children, all African American living in Virginia. While her parents did die when she was young, she was not an orphan and an only child like she said she was. She had people taking care of her and she had a whole family. It turns out that she had decided to run away from her family and completely exercise herself from her identity. She picked up a new name, she picked up a new race, and she completely erased who she was. So now I have a whole new family and it's surreal and it's strange and there's this part of me that doesn't really know who I am. And I think what surprises me the most is the fact that her story is not uncommon for the US at that time. Because she was white passing, she chose to completely reinvent herself and go by a completely different name and racial identity just to create a better life for herself. And while I'm incredibly grateful for the privilege that her decision provided for me, I'm also incredibly sad and confused and excited because I have a whole new family that I didn't know that I had. We're still uncovering details and we're still learning so much, but sharing her story, I'm hopeful will bring other people to find out about their families and maybe uncover similar stories. No one should ever have to feel the need to completely change their identity and step away from their race and their entire family just to find a better life. That is heartbreaking and that is so sad and that was so common at the time. I'm heartbroken for my grandmother since she never got to actually live her life as herself but I'm so excited as for what this means for my family moving forward. As for anyone with similar stories, I would love to hear what you've experienced because this is just the beginning for me and I just thought I'd share. <laughs> Why won't the Muslim community stand up as Americans and speak out clearly against ISIS? I don't accept that they are afraid because we are all afraid and they're attacking us, not the Muslims. Every single mosque in this country, the sermon on that Friday after San Bernardino was a condemnation of terrorism. We've condemned, 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 condemned. We've condemned more than more than we've read Quran lately. Right? It's been, I condemn, I condemn. And someone was even suggesting we have an app called I Condemn, so we can just press a button every time something happens and Muslims can say, I condemn, I condemn, I condemn. That's it. <laughs> There's an implicit racism sometimes in those questions, right? Because do we ask, when, when Dylan Roof murdered those people in that church, when, when a white supremacist carries out, murder, do we ask all white Americans in the country to stand up and condemn that when any other faith group has a lunatic that comes out, when someone blows up an abortion clinic in the name of Christianity, do we ask all Christians to condemn and why aren't we hearing you condemn that person that blew up the abortion clinic? So there's almost an implied guilt, collective guilt, and we have to reject that collective guilt. I'm not responsible for, I'm just as hurt as anybody else when, when an attack takes place. Muslims died on 9-11. Muslims died on 9-11. Hundreds of Muslims died on 9-11. Not just a few, hundreds of them. There were Muslim firefighters on 9-11. We reject the collective guilt. We do condemn. We condemn not because we believe that we're guilty. We condemn, number one, to distance ourselves. Number two, to, to show our congregation, you know, to, to just place that, that path forward, to pave that path that, okay, you know, this is not part of Islam and this is why it's not part of Islam. However, the media chooses what to cover and what not to cover. We reach out to the media all the time. But the types of guests that are brought on these media outlets are often, you know, not representative of our Muslim community. And when we do have someone that's put on these news channels eventually from our community, before they can even ask a question, they're asked questions like, do you support Hamas? Like, it, it, when, you know, they're, they're immediately put on the hot seat and, you know, they're 
their entire public life is put on display. So people don't want to deal with that nonsense, right? So we do condemn, we do stand up against that bigotry, and we stand up against that terrorism and all violence, in fact. But we've condemned ourselves out, so that's one. As far as the second part of that question, which is Muslims are being, or we're being attacked, not Muslims, the, the biggest victims, most of the victims of ISIS are Muslims. Mm -hmm. Muslims hate ISIS probably more than, <laughs> even non-American Muslims hate ISIS more than most Americans do probably. So Muslims are the greatest victims of ISIS. And actually the journalists that are being massacred and things of that sort, there are a lot of Muslim journalists that were being massacred too. That doesn't take away from the tragedy of losing American journalists and things of that sort. But what about the hundreds of Syrian journalists and Iraqi journalists that were beheaded as well by ISIS? So we're fighting this cancer as well. I often tell people the irony of my situation. I've had death threats from ISIS and I've also been threatened by Islamophobes. So I've been attacked online, I actually have screenshots and emails and things of that sort from ISIS threatening to kill me for speaking out against them. And then I've been threatened by Islamophobes for secretly belonging to ISIS and for being a simp for being uh, for sympathizing with ISIS and for mm. being a closet Islamist and so on and so forth. So the extremists will always speak in, in a synchronized fashion, but we have to reject it altogether. this representation that if you want representation make it yourself okay what uh yeah i'm producing this movie it has a lot of people of color in it queer people women what about me what about you it sounds a lot like you're talking about people like you what what about me you're already represented in media you just told me to make my own so i'm making my own no what do you mean, no? I don't like it! It, it! it makes me uncomfortable! How is me making my own media making you uncomfortable? Because!